say go or go or I'm good. Okay. Good morning, good morning. Hallelujah, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Well, if you believe things are turning around for your good, jump to your feet. Come on. We're going to have a little more church in here. Put your hands together with us. I like that. Come on. Let me see you wave your hand.
Good morning, good morning, all nations, and good morning, our streaming friends. I invite you in, hallelujah, to join us at right here at All Nations Church for our Sunday morning worship service. I must tell you that this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. And since we're in a rejoicing mood, I want to exhort you today and say, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I know that God has a word, hallelujah, just for you, just for us collectively. And I know that God is going to do something magnificent in our lives. So I want you to heart share, invite friends and family in to come and be a part of this worship service because I do know that it's going to impact your lives. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And while you're liking and sharing that video, I want you to know that here at All Nations, we are concerned and we care for you. We want to know that you all are doing well, that everything is okay with you and yours. So um, uh, from pastor, from our bishop designate, and from myself here at All Nations and all of our leaders, we want you to know that we are praying for you, that God has some Something just for you that he has not forgotten about his people with so many things going on God has something just for you in mind so I want you to join us stay to the end because there is a blessing even in the dismissal stay to the end and come and see what God has for you I know that it is going to be mind-blowing mind-boggling is going to bless your very lives so thank you for joining us and I know that God is going to bless you real good in Jesus name Hallelujah. Good morning, my ANC family. Listen, this is your lead pastor, Jonathan L. Woods Sr. I'm excited just to share with you guys today how God has been moving in our outreach program. I know you guys have been watching uh, as we share videos and photos of what God is doing, but I want you all to understand that this is no menial experience. This is work. When you look at all of the food here, it takes a lot of effort uh, to get this out to the community, and we need more volunteers. We're looking for all of our men to get involved with outreach. We're looking for all of our women to get involved with outreach. We're looking for our teenagers to get involved with outreach. Just in case you're wondering whether or not we're following CDC guidelines, we are following uh, the social distancing uh, 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 regulations that have been put in place. We're masked up. We are, we're protected. We're sanitized. So you don't have to worry about any of those things. Listen, get involved with outreach. You may say, how do I do it? Well, I'm glad you asked. You can reach out uh, to one of our staff members. You can reach out to our executive pastor. He will get you in contact with our pastor of outreach, which is Minister Wanda Wright, who is doing an amazing job with this program. We need help, ladies and gentlemen, and I know that God has given so much to us. It's time for us to give back to somebody else. So I'm going to look for you to get involved with our outreach ministry. And I promise you, it's going to be life-changing, not just for others, but for you. God bless you, and God keep you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, all nations. Hallelujah. Can you join in with us and give God glory? Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise because he's wonderful. He's an amazing God. And we count it a privilege to be able to come into the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, I want you to make his name large in the room. Come on, make his name large in the space where you are. And Father, we give you praise today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We want to do this together this morning. Can you put your hands together? And we're going to ask the Lord to come by here. Come on. Put your hands together. Hallelujah.
say one more time. This is the last time. Let's say, there's not enough room. Last time. For what God's going to do. Yes, Lord. Come on, lift your hands right where you are.
lift your hands and begin to reverence the name of Jesus. We reverence you, O oh God. We lift you, O oh God. We honor you, O oh God. We thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence. Millions didn't make it, but we are one of the ones who did. And we want to say thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father, we ask now that you feed us with a word, a word that will give us clarity, a word that will evoke revival within us, a word that will destroy the yokes and break the chains. Oh, God, a word that will send salvation and healing. And, Father, we thank you that it is so. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Somebody ought to clap your hands and give the Lord some praise today. Listen, I just want to take a moment to thank God for what he's doing in our lives. We serve a mighty God and I don't care who you are and I don't care what you see going on in our environment, in our society, in spite of even the COVID-19 pandemic, Jesus is still on the throne and he's sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. So I want you to know that it is impossible for you to fail because Jesus is on your side. As we get into the word this morning, I want to go to Genesis chapter number 11 in verse number 1 through verse number 9. The Bible says, and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, go to let us make brick and burn them thoroughly and they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar and they said go to let us build us a tower a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they, all, they have all one language. And this they began to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound or confuse their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city therefore it is the name it, therefore is the name of it called Babel because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth so far uh, the text I want to talk to you from this subject it's not going to go the way they planned it. It's not going to go the way they planned it. When you study the scripture, the word of God talks emphatically about a plan or plans. And uh, when we study plans, we must understand that a person's plan is their motive a person's plan is their strategy and the plan is all inclusive of what they are trying to reach or what they are trying to achieve and the bible talks about a plan in the proverbs 19 and 21 the scripture says there are many 
devices, and this word devices in the text means plans. There are many devices or plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. The counsel of the Lord that shall stand. In other words, it doesn't matter what your plan is. If your plan does not coincide with the plan of God, it will come to naught. I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, that every system that exists today, every kingdom that exists today, every institution that exists, and even every church that exists, if those entities are not wrapped up into the mind of God, and if their motives are not right, those things will not stand. Jesus began to declare in one passage of scripture, he says, as I live, every knee shall bow unto me and every tongue shall confess that I am the Lord. You must understand, ladies and gentlemen, that everything that is not of God will come to naught. It was Gamaliel that said about the Apostle Paul when the Sanhedrin Council met about his newfound conversion and his affinity for Christianity, his allegiance to Jesus the Christ and the church of the living God, the church in which he had previously persecuted. Now he is a champion of the vision of that church and the visionary. The Sanhedrin Council meets because Paul once sat on that same council and they were trying to figure out why does he have such a conviction to stand for the name of Jesus that he once persecuted? And the word of God teaches us that Gamaliel spoke up in the council meeting and said, if his work be not of God, it will come to naught. Ladies and gentlemen, I must suggest to you this morning that you need to stop hoping that people fail. You need to stop hoping that people, that what they're trying to do falls apart because your hope that they succeed or fail will have no effect on the outcome. What will determine the outcome of every person's plan Every person's motive, every person's venture is whether or not it coincides with the plan of God. So then your stance ought to be, your confession ought to be, I just want to be in the will of God. Who am I preaching to out there that will declare I'm not trying to impress anybody. I'm not trying to compete with anybody. I'm not even trying to make a name for myself. I just want to be in God's will. There are people right now who are trying to size you up because they see you making moves that you don't normally move or make. They see you doing things that you don't use usually do and they're wondering what in the world is going on with you you tell those individuals I got one life to live and I'm not going to waste it trying to be like everybody else I just want to be in the plan of God so we understand that God's plans will stand. Now, when we get into the meat of this message today, I want to deal with the tension in the room because there's so much going on in our society today. Um, we're literally dealing with social injustice right now. The death of George Floyd the death of Ahmaud Arbery, uh, the death of a Trayvon Martin, the death of a, a Tamir Wright, a Breonna Taylor. We could just go down the list of all of these 
deaths, these murders of innocent black people. And some may have been guilty, but the way they have been handled was against the plan of God. But ladies and gentlemen, you must understand that the things are going, that are going on in our country, the systematic racism, the institutionalized racism and the prejudice that we are dealing with, this was all a part of the plan of the founders of this country. For you must understand that before there was ever a black man here, before there was ever a white man here, there were Indians on this soil that were already planted here. We were not from here. Everybody else was a migrant that showed up later. But ladies and gentlemen, when America was established, according to the preamble, it says that we are created equal that we according to the constitution and the preamble within the constitution it says that we declare that all men were created equal but please understand ladies and gentlemen that the gentleman who wrote the constitution did not have black people in mind because they didn't consider us to be human beings and you must understand that when they began to build this country, they did not build it with their own hands. They built it on the back of slaves that were shipped over here from Africa. And those slaves were the ones that used their hands to build their houses, to build their businesses, uh, to plant their vineyards, and to raise their children. And those same slaves, they were told that they had no soul. They were told that they had that they didn't have the capacity to learn. They were told that they did not have right nor, nor uh, inheritance or allegiance to education. So you must understand that the black people in America were in slavery as long as the children of Israel were in slavery to Egypt. They were oppressed. They were broken down. You take a man that is free from his homeland where he's been told he was a king. He's been told Oh, he was a prince. You bring him over here on a ship and you beat him down. You change his name. You take out of him everything that was told him as it relates to royalty. You tell him that he doesn't have a soul. You tell him that he doesn't have the capacity to learn and you make him do everything you want him to do and 400 years later you just want black people to get over it. Now, I need you to understand that when your roots go back, all of us are connected to a generation before us. And whatever happened in the former or the previous generations, it trickles up to the generations that we are dealing with right now. So a lot of us, and I want to speak to white America and black America, because whenever there is a cry of injustice, the against injustice many white people get offended but please understand that when we speak out against racism we're not speaking out against white people we are speaking out against racism and if you become offended perhaps it's because you've got some hidden racism on the inside of you because I've never been offended by a word that was preached that had nothing to do with me I feel like talking a little bit in here. And so you got to check yourself. You got to check yourself. And now I want to deal with the elephant in the room because on the cusp of the death of George Floyd, there, were, there was outrage that have wreaked havoc across our land. And there are many, many protesters that have been uh, agitated and activated. And some of the protests turned into riots because of anger and foolishness. And I need to under, I need you to understand black people and whites that are on the side of black people that the Bible says get angry but sin not. And you must understand that you cannot fight fire with fire or you're just going to create a bigger fire. Somebody has to be civilized enough to be angry but to be peaceful, to be angry but to be non-confrontational. 
Oh God, can I talk to you here? It's not going to change anything for you to take a brick and throw it through a black business. Oh y'all ain't going to help me today. It's not going to change anything for you to hurt another police officer that was just doing his job. Let me tell you something. You protesters that are angry at all of the law enforcement, you're doing what racist white people are doing against the black race. You are stereotyping a whole system. You are stereotyping everybody when there's only bad seeds in the system. I want to say to every racist white person that all black people are not bad. And I want to say to every hurt black person that all white people are not bad. There are good black people and there are bad black people. There are good white people and there are bad white people. And the good white people that are good don't make them gooder than the good black folks. And the bad white black people that are bad don't make them better than the black, the white folks. Y'all ain't gonna help me preach, but I came loaded today. Day. I need you to understand something. We've got to deal with the elephant in the room. Now while we're dealing with it, I want to talk to my black brothers and sisters that are offended with those who are riding. Let me help you here. Uh, as well as those, I know I hear a lot of white people in white America talk about how we don't march about the black on black crime and how we don't deal with the elephant in our community, the disillusionment and the black on black crime. But let me tell you something, that is coming from a systematic uh, oppressive spirit that was seeded into our people through racism. I heard a white man tell his daughter the other day uh, that uh, there's equal opportunity that any black man can be just as successful as any white man. And, and my dear white brothers and sisters, if you think like that, you are a part of the problem. I want to challenge you, if you've never been black for 24 hours in America, I wish you would try it and understand that it ain't that easy. If you're black, you got to be 10 times better to get the same opportunity. And so I need you to understand that, yes, we have to deal with the violence in our community, but if until we deal with the oppression in our community and the lack of opportunities and the lack of education in our community and the lack of resources, in our community, we may as well not deal with the, with the violence because violence is always a direct result of poverty and, and hopelessness. And so I need you to understand here that when we look at the Tower of Babel, and I've got to go on here because my time is almost out. But according to Genesis chapter number 11, there was a group of people. The earth was one language. Now, this is post uh, the age of Noah. God just destroyed the entire earth, save eight people and the animals. <laughs> Every brand, every type of animal was on the ark. Y'all know the story. I don't have time to get into it, but they got on the ark. God sent rain on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And because of that, all men were killed. The Bible says the earth was one language. Watch this. And one speech. In other words, the earth, everybody spoke the same language and everybody spoke the same thing. Now, this is how America started. It started with one language and one speech. Everybody in this country had the same mentality. And, and, and the Bible says, they said, and it came to pass, they journeyed from the east. They came from the east. Now, America is, is in Western culture. But it didn't start there. Those who founded this country came from the east. You'll get that when you get home. They came from the east, they came to the west, and they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there, and they said one to another, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly, and they had brick for the stone, and slime had they for mortar, and they said, go to, let us build us a city, 
and a tower. Now notice here, they, they say, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Now I need you to understand this, ladies and gentlemen, that the purpose for this city and this tower was not a good purpose and I need you to understand whenever you build anything I feel the Holy Ghost whenever you build anything for the wrong reason eventually God is going to tear it down now they said we're going to build this we're going to build the city because we want to keep everybody with the same mentality together we want to keep everybody who talk the same way together and we want to build a tower because when we begin to multiply we need a place for the people to dwell and the, the tower is not only going to be a dwelling place but it will be the epicenter for religious practice and we're going to build it unto heaven we're getting ready to try to touch God in our own way. I feel like talking here. And so we're going to keep everybody together with the same mentality. Can't you see uh, racism and prejudice in this text? Because there is a feeling and can I just go ahead and say it like this? There is a feeling that unity and unison are, are compliant or congruent. In other words, now let's deal with music for a moment. When when you sing in unison, everybody sings the same part. And people think that that is the mind of God. One note, one people. The devil is a liar. If that was God's mind, he never would have created the Asian. He never would have created the Indian. He never would have created the Hispanic. He never would have created the black man. He never would have created the white man. God created diversity because God's idea of unity is harmony and when you talk about harmony in music there are different notes that, that make one sound I feel like talking and he didn't mean for us to just go with our race and be amongst our race he meant for us to coexist so that we can operate in harmony because harmony is the mind of God I wish you would holler at somebody and tell them I love harmony I love it who in here wants to buy a CD where all the songs are in unison? Nobody wants it because we like different notes and, and that's why God created us different because he wanted us to come together to make one beautiful sound, one beautiful picture, one beautiful nation. I feel like talking here. That's why when a black man gets with a white woman or when a white, when a white man gets with a black uh, woman, they make beautiful babies because there's something about the commingling of different type of ethnicity. It, is. it makes something beautiful. Y'all ain't got to say amen, but I need somebody to type harmony, 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 harmony. Now notice, notice what happens. Notice what happens. The Bible says, the Lord said, behold, the people is one. They have one language and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Now, this is not a bad situation if their motives are right. But when your plan is not right, God will come into your harmonized or your unified situation and he'll tear it up. Notice what he said. The Bible says in verse number seven, go to, let us go down. And there confound the lang their language that they may not understand one another's speech. I never thought I would see the day in our generation where the Republican Party would be as divided as they are. I never thought I would see the Democrats divided like they are. Please understand the division is a God thing. You ought to nudge your neighbor and tell him it's a God thing. Why? Because 
uh, America, we called it one nation under God. But you mean to tell me God was behind black men being hung in trees and beat like animals and treated like dogs and cats? The devil is alive. And the same thing is happening today in the world and in the church. We will do anything and call it God. But I come to tell you, God is not in everything. I wish I had seven people to find seven other people and tell them you can put his name on it if you want to put his name on it. But he is not in everything. Put a tongue on it if you want to. Everything ain't God. So God said, you know what? If I keep standing back, they're going to keep building a principality they're going to keep building a kingdom that has nothing to do with me so he says i'm going to go and i'm going to confound their language watch this so that they won't understand each other's speech it, it wasn't about the language it was about the speech because the speech is what gets you in trouble it's not what you say, it's how you say what you say. It's the motive behind what you say. And I need you to understand, America, that there's confusion in our country because God has confused our language. You even got protesters fighting each other because there's confusion. Now, as I was studying for this message, Theologians say that Nimrod, the dictator, was the leader of the people. Whenever you have a confused leader, a wicked leader, a leader that's not a servant leader, you're going to produce confused people. Y'all ain't gonna like it when I say it, but email the president and tell him I said it, that the country that we are living in today looks like its leadership. We're confused because he's confused. Now I'm gonna say this in closing. The Bible says, God said, I came to confuse their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth. And they left off to build the city. Verse number nine says, therefore, is the name of it called Babylon. Notice I didn't say Babel. Because when you do your etymology on the word Babylon, you will find the word Babel. And the word Babel means confusion. You know when you babble, you talk crazy. You, 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 you drunk people babble. And he says the name of that place is called Babel. Babel because the Lord did there confound the language of the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon all the face of the earth. I'm closing when I tell you this. That God will create unity by creating division. This is why, ladies and gentlemen, I've got to salute my white brothers and sisters that have joined in the movement to say, you know what? We don't know what racism feels like, but we've seen it in activity. And we will admit that white privilege is not a myth. It's a reality. Now, can I close? God has a way of doing what he wants to do to stop a plan that the enemy thought would work. God is exposing systems in America. 
that need to be uprooted. Sometimes there are things that lie dormant, but they're still present. When 45 got in office and began to spew out racial rhetoric from the over office, it gave rise to what was already here. It was just lying dormant. But he did just what God wanted him to do. Because before there can be an expelling, there has to be an exposing. It can't hide anymore. It can't hide in the pulpits. It can't hide in the pulpit. It can't hide on the ju in the judicial system. It can't hide in the political offices. It can't hide anymore on the law enforcement. God is bringing awareness. And church... This is what the Lord is telling me to tell you. Vengeance is his. He handled those people at Babel. Yes, we should speak out against injustice. I want to close with this scripture. Micah 6 and 8. It says, he hath showed thee, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God? That's the three things. Those are the three things that God is requiring of us. Do justly. It is just for us to speak out against injustice. It is righteous for us to expose the social ills that pervade our land. It is righteous. And to love mercy. Look for mercy. Look for mercy. Don't look for justice. Don't look for judgment. Rather, look for mercy. And then walk humbly with God. Rioters, go home. Violent people, put up your guns. I've been angry, I've been upset, I've been bothered, but I realize that vengeance is in the hands of God. Will you lift your hands wherever you are? Father, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for this word. I thank you, God, for giving us the understanding to know that Every system that's not of you, it's coming down. Over in the book of Revelation, God, you said Babylon the great has fallen. I thank you that Babel, that confusion is coming down in the name of Jesus. I thank you that racial injustice, that there's a day of judgment coming on it. And it's here, it's here, it's here. God, I thank you that you're not going to stop until it's plucked up by the root. I thank you right now that you're orchestrating change in our city, cities, change in our nation, change in our government, change in the church world, change everywhere that we go. I thank you for change. And I thank you, God, that your people, white, black, red, yellow, that we all are going to come together in unity, in oneness, to make a harmonious sound, to give glory to thy name. I thank you that it is so. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on and keep worshiping. Keep worshiping God.
that this is the time where we must follow peace with all men, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord, that peace must be our God. It must go before us in everything that we do. I know that so many things are going on. We're living through a pandemic, and now the racism that has risen its ugly head. But we must know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and the call of them that according to his purpose. I want to tell you that if it's you, it's okay to be angry. It's okay to be upset. We're all disenfranchised together. But I want to tell you that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And if God be for us, who can be against us? So we stand on the word of God because we know that heaven and earth, it will pass away, but his word will stand. God's word will stand. So many under the sound of my voice and so many people that you know, I don't even care if you're reaching out for prayer for someone else. If you're saying, I'm hurt, I'm bothered, I'm disgusted, I'm frustrated, and I'm even angry, if that's you, I want you to type your special request or your special need in the feed right now. Because I want to tell you, we've all been there. We're all going through this thing together. And it doesn't matter what color or creed you are. We can all stand and say, I disagree with what all is going on. And I stand on the word of God that we are supposed to be the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. Type that request in now. We want to pray with you. We want you to know that as a church, as an August body of believers, that we believe God with you. We see what's going on. We're not blinded to what's going on. But we know that God has a way, hallelujah, of stepping into our situation, of stepping into this very circumstance and declaring his peace, declaring his divine order. So we want God to be glorified. We want God to be glorified. Our flesh is angry, but we know that no flesh is going to glory in his sight. We want God to be magnified, even in this, even in this. So many others are saying that I need salvation. If that's you, God is for you, and God is with you. Type salvation right where you are. It's never too late. As long as you have breath in your body, hallelujah, there's time to reach God because he's waiting on you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to deny myself. And I'm going to put my hand in your hand, God. Hallelujah. This is a time as you continue to worship God, I dare not offer you the opportunity to sow into the house of the Lord because I want to tell you your sowing is a part of your worship. I sow because I believe God. I sow because I've tried everything else and everything else has failed me. But when I tried God, when I stepped out on my faith and I said, God, Everything else has failed. This is the only thing that I haven't tried. I'm going to try your word. And I'm going to tell you, I've been more blessed in my life than I could ever imagine because I trusted the Lord and I trusted his process and I trusted his principles. So I want to tell you, if that's you, you say, you know what? I don't have a whole lot to give. Some are not even working. Our bishop has always declared, sow your change for your change. I want you to sow into the house of the Lord right now you can text to give that seed to 205-632-1129. Text give and follow the prompts. And I know that God is going to return unto you a harvest, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I want you to sow that seed now. That information is on the screen. Just follow those prompts and watch God bless you. Because I want you to be a blessed people. Many say that I'm not blessed like everybody else, but you have the opportunity to be and I want you to be blessed. I know God wants his people to be blessed. Hallelujah. 
And as you're sowing that seed, I would like right now, while the doors of the house is closed, hallelujah, the doors of the kingdom is always open. I want to offer you the opportunity to join with our, our faith, connect with us here at All Nations. We have a man of God that loves God and loves God's people. I want you to connect. If you don't have anywhere, you're not, you're not worshiping anywhere, uh, I want you to come join with us because I want you to know that you're welcome right here at All Nations. We want you to come. We want you to be a part of our large family. Come be a part of us. Hallelujah. You can join on our Facebook page or you can go to our website and you can join there. And I want you to be a part of this great community of believers. Hallelujah. At this time, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. We magnify you because there is no God like our God. And you've proven yourself to us over and over again. So, God, as all the things that are going on in the world, God, we know, God, that your plan exceeds and supersedes any plan of the world, God. So, God, we don't align ourselves with anything, but we align ourselves with you, oh, God. For we know that your plan will work, oh, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Bless the seed, bless the giver, God. Bless your people everywhere. Meet your people at the point of their need. And we thank you, we praise you, and we magnify you now. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. And thank God. People of God, be blessed. This concludes our service. God bless you in Jesus' name.